One of the things you're going to notice right away, Muhammad Ali fights with his hands down. And you might be sitting there asking yourself, well, you know, I hear all this talk about keeping your hands up. Isn't that supposed to be, like, the most important thing? Every troll on the internet that's ever commented where they shouldn't is going to be talking about uh, having hands up. They'll, they'll go on a professional world champions page and comment, keep your hands up. It's, it, it, the funny thing is, it's they're, they're not wrong. Keeping your hands up isn't a bad idea, but they're not right either. You really have to examine what are the benefits of keeping your hands down. Because it's not like he's doing this for no reason. Actually, most of the great strikers in mixed martial arts as well keep their hands down. You got Conor McGregor, Anderson. One is that I believe that the human brain can only have so much going on at once when it comes to your body. It only has so much RAM or processing power or whatever. And keep, if you have your hands up real high, like you can see Muhammad Ali's opponents doing, notice they're just not as bouncy. They're just not as quick on their feet as Ali because their hands are up and their brain is just more distracted from their legs. So by putting your hands next and your punches kind of come from weirder angles, they come from down low, so your opponent has to be kind of looking down low to catch him in the first place. And just try keeping your hands up. You feel all that tension in your shoulder when you keep your arms up? That tension kind of slows you down. When you got your arms low, they're more relaxed. They're more whippy-like when you throw them out there. One thing I'll definitely say is that you, you can't keep your hands low and get too close, right? At some point, your arms are going to have to come up. But when you're playing on the outside, when you're sticking and moving, shaking and grooving like Muhammad Ali is here, you can keep those hands low and you can bounce around and keeping them low is gonna allow you to be able to move around a lot easier. Now, between me and you, neither one of us is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was special. Muhammad Ali could do this against the best. We're probably not the same. Doesn't mean you can't learn a lot, but just know, as we go through this breakdown, the man was special. The man was, had talents and gifts from God. He was, he's the greatest for a reason. And uh, his, his footwork and the way he keeps his hands down and he dances around people is a ginormous, gigantic part of it. It's just extremely pleasing to look at. You're gonna notice as Muhammad Ali is jumping around the ring, is he's doing exactly that. He's kind of bouncing in place. And there's a lot of, you know, I have a lot of theories on the bounce, right? People kind of do it subconsciously. Um, like Bruce Lee was all bouncy. Stephen Thompson's all bouncy. Really good strikers tend to get bouncy. And it, what it is, it's, it's, it sets a rhythm that kind of acts as a glue. It, it's like there, when you fight low with your hands like this and you're moving around, you, you know, you're dancing. And that bounce is kind of like the, the rhythm of the, of the movement. And, and it, that rhythm glues all of the movements together. And, and you're going to notice that Muhammad Ali, with that bounce, is just much more efficient because moving in rhythm is more efficient than not moving in rhythm, as you can see his opponent's doing there. His, his opponent is just behind him because he's inefficient and he's not moving in a synchronistic rhythm like Ali is. He dances this man and that that bounce is like the metronome. That bounce is like the tempo. In this video, I've got a lot of clips of Muhammad Ali at his bounciest. This, this, these are from before all the drama happened with the Vietnam draft and man, pre-Vietnam draft drama Muhammad Ali was just a freaking unbelievable unbelievable I, i've never seen anything like it you got to see it to believe it definitely one of the things that i noticed the most was muhammad ali's footwork and his sense of distance these things go hand in hand right his footwork is so good because his sense of distance is so good and his sense of distance is so good because his footwork is so good i think you know as you train striking as you train any striking art boxing, kickboxing, taekwondo, karate, whatever it is, you start to develop a sense of distance. And it's, it's something that you will have that an untrained person does not have. You just have this sense of how far away things are from you. It's like a sixth sense. And I think Muhammad Ali won. Yeah, he trained that, but I think the man was just special. I think he really, something with his eyes, something with his brain, something that just, this, this what he does is insane. He's, his sense of distance is, is probably better than, than 
anybody I've ever seen. And you know, he is the greatest, so it might be the greatest sense of distance uh, of all time in a striking sport. Uh, you can really see it coming up here. He, he's just, look at that. Look at that, wait for it, wait for it. They get in close, he goes for the swing, he just effortlessly turns his chin to get away from that. Masterful sense of distance. Okay, now the float. I don't even know how to explain the float. And if you watch my videos before, you'll know I get super into like breaking stuff down very specifically and getting into and getting into like the nitty gritty detail. But I don't, I use float as a, I would say a general term for what Muhammad Ali just seems to just float away as you try to hit him. It's, 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 uh, it's just the man is special. The man is special. As you hit him, he can just float away. And he kind of shoulder rolls back and forth and he kind of dances away. But you just miss him. And it looks like he's moving backwards slowly. That's the, that's the weird thing. He just makes you miss and he looks like he's moving slow. And he, you can't make him lose his balance. I think that is absolutely one of the most important things here is y y you chase after him and he's dancing and he's bouncing and he's moving away and he's always on balance. He never, he is never, see right there, you see it, he's, he's, he just dances his way back to being balanced. Very lucid, very like water, like Bruce Lee, just, just floating away. And I think this is once again a good time to bring up that you are not Muhammad Ali. You are not, you might be Muhammad Ali against people much worse than you, right? You might be able to pull this stuff off against people that just are, are not at your level. But when I say you're not Muhammad Ali, I'm meaning, listen, if you're trying to be a pro and you're looking for like a style to base yourself around, Muhammad Ali is, 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 <sighs> Maybe a good choice for some people, but probably not a good choice for a lot, right? It, it's not like when you go into a school of boxing, when you go in to learn boxing on day one, they're going to teach you to keep your hands down and, and dance around the person, right? That would almost be seen as like irresponsible of a coach to do as if they, if they taught you how to fight like Muhammad Ali. Yet, maybe he's the one we should be learning from, right? He is the greatest. He is the greatest of all times right and and it's, it's a constant question of you know these things these things he does like floating backwards like this should i be copying this right was the man technically brilliant was he just special probably the answer is both so the float is just this this ability to float backwards and avoid danger but he was pretty protected down there. Boxing, you can get away with it. You can you can duck down and you can make all kinds of these meta strategies around that crouch position that you really couldn't do in like MMA or, or Muay Thai. It's still cool to watch though. I, I very much enjoy it. One thing that's really unique about Muhammad Ali is he, he's really good at getting under your shots uh, even though he's tall, even though he's very tall. Usually you don't really think of taller fighters as ducking underneath the stuff because they're taller it's harder to get down there but Ali was really good at it Ali had a keen sense of how to duck underneath hooks and such and, and he really did it from different ranges from up close from far away as he was dancing as he was engaging excellent use of the duck in my opinion uh, the ability to duck the ability to level change like that and get underneath punches is is one skill that boxers are way better at than MMA fighters, that MMA fighters should probably spend more time doing. I mean, from that ducking position, if you're a grappler, it's fantastic, right? You, they, they almost fall right into you and you can shoot. If you're One thing about Muhammad Ali, and when you play a style like his, you gotta be good at this, absolute freaking master at getting off the ropes absolutely triple quadruple black belt level in, in getting off the ropes i've never seen anyone just just be able to look like you're about to corner them and then nope just just gets out of there let's assume that you are playing the style of muhammad ali right let's 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 enough about me warning you about the style of muhammad ali let's let's act like you're going to actually use it now i'm a you're a young 
fighter and you want to fight like Muhammad Ali, you got to get really freaking good at getting out of the, the ropes like he is here. You have to have many strategies. You have to have to be able to duck and get out of there. You got to be able to slip and get out of there. You got to be able to post and get out of there. Uh, you got to have many options. You got to have just just be very aware of this situation. A big part of your success. If you want to fight like Muhammad Ali, you got to be able to get out of the corners like nobody's fucking business, man. You, no one puts you in the corner. You dance out of there. You pivot out of there. You duck out of there. You get out of there and you don't stay there. That's how Muhammad Ali does it. No one is backing this man up and putting him in a bad spot for long. The post. The post is essentially when Muhammad Ali big brothers you. He reaches his arm out and then he places it on your head. There's a couple different uses for this. One, it just kind of stops you from coming in, right? Like if, if, they're, if they're playing that crouch position like we talked about, you can just kind of stiff arm them and, and they won't be able to come in quite as easily. Second is it kind of blinds them for a second. You blind them and then you can hit them with something else. It's also a fantastic tool for after you fire your punch, you post and then he can't return fire back at you. See here, Muhammad Ali is kind of stopping him from coming in with it, blinding him, making him so it's annoying, and he's using that to measure the distance as well. That's one major advantage of that post. You measure distance with it. Get that touch and feel where he's at. The push. I think one th very surprising thing about Muhammad Ali that people really don't expect. They expect, oh, he's dancing around, he can't be that strong. No, he's really strong. He's really strong. He can he can push you clear across the ring. He, he often does it. When people get too close to him, he's very capable of just pushing them away, right? If all, Let's say you do get him in the corner, right? If you, we, I just said he's really difficult to get into the corner, just like Joe Frazier has now. If you get in on him like Joe Frazier's, he can just push you away. He's very, very strong. People assume, oh, he's dancing around. He must not be that tough with his upper body, but he is. He pushes people clear across the ring sometimes. And I think, you know, the more I look at Muhammad Ali and the dancing around style, the more he, I, I realize he really was prepared for every negative of the style. He had tactics and strategies and, and techniques for every weakness that this, this style presents. And the push is one of them. Just being able to push someone away from you, it's genius. If they get too close, just push them away. Up until now, we've really been looking at how Muhammad Ali circles around his opponent. He does that in the beginning, but eventually he's gonna start moving in and out on you. He's gonna start getting aggressive, and he, like we said, he has that masterful sense of distance. He's gonna start moving in and out, fainting in, backing out, really starting to gauge you. And when this happens, this is when you really start to run into trouble, because Muhammad Ali is gonna start figuring you out by moving in and out. A lot of times he starts doing this after you've missed a lot already, right? And with that footwork he's got and that bounce that he's got, and that rhythm, and that sense of distance, you're not gonna really wanna play too much in an exchange of Maria. One fairly unique thing about Muhammad Ali is that he moves and throws his jab at the same time, right? Usually when people are fighting combat sports, uh, really that any that have a jab, they're planted and they kind of step into it and go. Muhammad Ali, what he does is he dances around you, moving in and out on you, and then he starts throwing that jab, right? But he does it while he's in motion. And because he does it while he's in motion, he's really doing it from all kinds of weird, bizarre angles and weird, bizarre timing that you don't expect. Because usually people throw this, like I said, from a more grounded, rooted position in their stance, not so much on the move. And you know, when Ali starts throwing the jab and starts hitting, man, he's gonna start throwing that faint jab behind it. And he's so killer with the faint jab. I think this is one of his, his best fights that you're watching right here. This is versus Cleveland Williams. And if you watch, you know, Muhammad Ali starts getting that jab going, and then he's gonna start feigning it and going low and high, fainting low, going high with the jab, fainting high, going low. He, he's just dancing around and he's faking and he's making you think and you're getting so frustrated because you're missing and he's dancing around you and you, you know, everyone's watching and this guy's bouncing around and you, you just don't look very cool. <laughs> so anyone out there copying the boxing style of Muhammad Ali, make sure you master the moving jab and equally important, is mastering the faint jab 
off of the moving jab. You start hitting the moving jab, then you can start fainting, and then things really start to open up. The check hook is, it really fits in perfectly with the style uh, that Muhammad Ali does, dancing around, bouncing, moving and grooving. It's, it's kind of, there's two ways to think about a check hook, right? Usually you do it, you move backwards as someone comes in at you. You kind of check them as they come in. Uh, the other way it can be done is you throw it off of a pivot. So when you pivot, you throw the check hook at the same time. So that way you kind of pivot out of the way and you get to knock them at the same time. So either way, you check them as he comes in or he's coming in and you pivot off of the hook, right? You pivot off and you get away and make an angle. Leaping left hook, different from the check hook, right? When the check hook is being used, that's when you're coming in, the opponent's coming in at you. The leaping left is where you are on the attack now. You are literally kind of shuffling and jumping forwards as you throw that left, because you need to use that leap forwards in order to cover the distance. The left hook isn't very long by itself. You gotta kind of jump in with it, leaping forward in order to land it. I mean, like all great boxers, right? Like all great champions before him, Muhammad Ali has a killer cross. And definitely one thing to worry about when facing Ali and his cross is, is if you're chasing him, you're kind of walking into this thing. You know, in the martial arts, there's this, there's this core philosophy of use their force against them, right? Judo does this, jiu-jitsu does this. In striking, I can think of no better example of using their force against them than nailing them with a cross as they were chasing you, right? As they were moving in, because it makes it so that the, the force is much more amplified, right? It's like two trains coming together. Not only does he get hit by my power, but the actual action of him of him moving in, right? Him moving into it increases the power. So one move that Muhammad Ali does more than anybody, like to do this once in a career is like, it is like a highlight reel, right? To do that once in a career is a highlight reel. This man uses this move we're gonna call the fade as like an integral part of his style. He's not just being fancy when he does this. And what he mean, what I mean by this is he's gonna step with his back foot. His back foot goes backwards as the opponent throws the shot. And when his back foot goes backwards, right, his head automatically goes with it. That's just kind of how that works. And he uses this so effectively, just, just gets out of the way of these shots, just makes you miss by stepping. It's, it's not like he's arching his back, like not like in the Matrix movie. He's stepping backwards in order to get that done. And, and you can see when he does that, it's like your arm goes across your body. And Muhammad Ali just comes back and nails you in that in that second that it takes for you to recover. You're getting blasted by Muhammad Ali himself. <laughs> like I said, Muhammad Ali was just special. He was spooky good at this really difficult move. And even more spooky, I think the scariest thing about how good Muhammad Ali was, he would kind of do it mid-combination. Right, so he'd be in the pocket, he'd be hitting you with shots, and then as he's hitting you, he fades. That is just, in watch, punch, punch. How can he sense this coming? How does he do that, right? He's, he's, he's not just doing it on the retreat. He'll be right up in your face and he'll fade. I've never seen anyone really utilize the fade, you know, on the retreat, but let alone as they're coming in just to fade back like that. You rarely see that because the weight shifting back and forth is very difficult. The weight of moving in versus the weight of going back. So definitely, definitely a, a special thing he does. Now the most likely thing, the most we're talking about combos now by the way, we're switching gears a little bit. The most likely combo Ali is going to hit you with is just a beautiful jab cross. And he can do it from anywhere, right? He can move it on the retreat, right? He can do it coming in at you. Muhammad Ali can throw this thing from anywhere. And, and I think it's the, the dancing around and the angles that make it so efficient. He throws it from places you really just weren't prepared for because he can dance to them so efficiently with that footwork. One thing that makes it pretty unique, his jab cross, as we talked about before, is that his hands, they fire from down low, right? When the hands are firing from down low, they're just, they're really hard to read. They're not as telegraphed. They're more whippy. 
And, and I think this is one place you're going to really see the advantage of keeping those hands down. If you can really start landing these shots on them, man, your, fan, your hands going to be so much faster with your hands a little lower than if they're all tired because you've got them up so high all the time. I think I should absolutely mention that this is covering a, like a double jab cross as well. We're going to kind of can just consolidate that into this one category here. I think it's really, really important to know for anyone studying the, the style of Muhammad Ali, he was really good and really almost, he was good with everything, but he really kind of specialized in these straight shots. He had like zero fat on his punches. There was not a lot of telegraph, if any at all. They came from every angle and they just moved right down the center. And, and a lot of times when people are chasing you, they're gonna chase you and they're gonna start throwing big looping shots. When you specialize in these straight shots, uh, you can cut them off you, because the straight line is going to get there quicker than the circular line. So these these straight shots are great for when you got a style where you kind of bounce around and invite people in or for when you're going on the attack. Hook cross, right? This is one of the most classic, one of the most common finishing combinations, I think, in, in all of boxing, right? You throw that left hook and you follow up with the cross right after. One of the things that makes it so effective is that it's two different lines of attack, right? The way you block these things that come in a circular path are very different than the way you block things that come in a straight path. So having to switch between blocking something circular to then blocking something straight it is more difficult to do than just blocking something that's coming in one of these paths. Muhammad Ali, he was nasty at it. He would either blast you off of a check hook and throw a cross after that, or he'd kind of come in with his leaping hook. He'd move in with the leaping hook and, and, and throw the cross behind that as well. So he could really set it up from any variation of the hook that he threw. Of course, you have the inverse of that, right? You have the hook cross, but you also have the cross hook. The cross hook works in, in a very similar way in that it comes from two different angles of attack, one straight, one circular. And it kind of breaks up the pattern, right? You can take advantage of that concept of coming from two different planes of attack and you can change the way you do it. So in case someone gets too familiar with the hook cross, you throw the cross hook at them instead. Now one combination I've noticed boxers just tend to be better at than MMA athletes is this double left hook, right? This pop, pop, double left. It's, it's almost like a, like, a, like a loose jab type of deal. But hitting them with that double left at the same time is something that Muhammad Ali was really specialized in. He could crack you twice with that thing in a matter of seconds. Not only that, anytime he would hit you after that. And you know, this, this just makes the, the whole game of Muhammad Ali so layered, right? There's just so much like depth to Muhammad Ali's style. He, he evolves as the fight goes on. He presents new problems and challenges off of the old problems and challenges you think you figured out. Just, just a genius, genius fighter, especially with that double left. Talk about uppercuts now. Uppercuts, he, uh, Muhammad Ali was interesting in that he would almost use it as like a check uppercut. When you come in at him, especially if you were gonna be in that crouching stance, he'd often counter with this uppercut as you were advancing. So it was really good for those, those style of fighters that like to crowd him in the corner and crouch and, and, and try to box him in and throw hooks to the body and such. An excellent counter attack for that. So any anytime Muhammad Ali would see you start playing that style, that's when the uppercuts would start coming out. One thing I definitely think is worth noting is a shovel hook, right? The sh and half hook. It's like the 45 degree angle that's in between those things. And this was really made things much more layered and much more many, many angles of attack Ali was coming from. These shovels would come from just strange, bizarre angles that you didn't even see coming. And oftentimes these shovels would be coming behind jabs. Right? He throws that jab and then a weird shovel hook angle comes out of nowhere. It's just another layer that comes off of his jab. That footwork and jab deadly combination that has so many layers of attack behind it. Now keeping in mind all of the combos we just talked about. Jab cross, right? Cross hook, uppercut, uppercuts to hooks, double left, all that thing. Muhammad Ali would just kind of glue all those different combinations together. 
right? He would glue all those combinations together, and I, I think he was just so good at finding what the space was, finding where the shot was, finding where the angle was, and using the right shot selection to do that. But, you know, pretty much he would usually stick to the combos that I showed you, just glued together in, in different ways. And I think that's a really useful thing to know, right? It's not like you have to know a bazillion uh, combinations. Like, it's not like you do a 10-12 punch combination and that's the combination. What you really want to think of is, okay, I have maybe 10 two or three punch combinations that I can glue together with other two to three punch combinations. Right? That way I don't have to be thinking so much in, in the moment. I can just kind of do these things sporadically. Because you, you don't want to have to be thinking, oh my god, I have to throw a 10 punch combination. No. You want to connect things live and dynamically in the moment. That's really where like the art comes from. That's where like the expression comes from. And you know, it's a little different in MMA because there's just so many more weapons. But I think that concept is true to know, right? It, uh, people tend to get too much on either the left or right of either left being like too systematic and the right being like too much improv and do it as you go you really need a, a mix of both yin yang and having many small combinations that you can kind of piece together in when i say stop combo i mean muhammad ali's uncanny ability that just, you know, he's dancing around, but then all of a sudden he just stops and just blasts you with multiple shots all at once. And it's really this ability to be dancing around, dancing around, dancing around, and then all of a sudden just to stop in his tracks. And and, and that is just what's so confusing, right? He just stops and pop, 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 hits you a couple times, and then he just moves away, dances away, floats away ever so effortlessly. So if you're studying the style of Muhammad Ali, Definitely study his ability to just kind of stop and pop at any given moment. Listen, when you're the GOAT, you get away with certain things that mortals do not get away with. One of them being, he shuffles his feet in front of you with his patented Ali shuffle. That distracts you, and then he blasts you. And, you know, if you just watch this. Shuffle, hit. Shuffle. Blast. Twice in that combination. Like I said, sometimes mortal should not have tried this, but it's this idea of he would distract you down low with this fancy move and then throw up top. So maybe take the concept. Maybe take the concept of doing a little thing to distract your opponent and then blasting him after that. Maybe not exactly this one per se. Also, you'd look kind of like a poser if you were out here copying the, the Ollie shuffle. That's a little that's a little bit much. You gotta come up with your own thing. But, you know, he, he used it effectively. He didn't use it a whole lot, right? It wasn't like the fade where it's like this fancy thing that's it's, it's more than that. It's built into his entire arsenal. He would do this to kind of stunt, right? When he really knew he was up, that's when the shuffles to combination was coming out. So let me just remind you of one thing I brought up earlier. This guy is way stronger than you think, right? And keep that in mind as we talk about the next section of this man's technical arsenal he was so good at engaging the clinch he was so good at getting a hold of that clinch right when he was about to be in danger and i think this is the great overlooked aspect of his game he was one str much stronger than you think and two he was excellent at the timing of grabbing that clinch and he would always if he couldn't get himself off the ropes with his footwork his clinch game was there to back him up. And I think this really shows the intelligence of Muhammad Ali. He really got good at doing all the things he knew that hands low dancing around style was bad at, was weak at, I should say. The, the being able to get off the ropes, the masterful sense of distance, right? And one thing he definitely knew he was gonna have to be able to do was clinch up with these guys and, and, and be good at it and be strong there. And he is. It's, it's like this big giant fail safe he has for when he's dancing around and you come to him in the corner, he can clinch. And one thing that's unique about Muhammad Ali is he'll talk to you, 
right? He'll start whispering in your ear about how he's the greatest and shit, and how you, you know, just all these he rhymes and all kinds of crazy things. Especially against George Foreman, he does this, right? So George Foreman would come in, and Muhammad Ali would just whisper in his ear, and then push him away, even when the ref breaks it, just to kind of assert his dominance. It, it, this, this, this clinch to talking in your ear, right, to piss you off and get you going. This was absolutely, uh, possibly the most overlooked thing about Muhammad Ali's style. You want to play Muhammad Ali's style, you got to master the clinch, and I'd say the, the shit talk is optional. <laughs> One of his primary ways of engaging the clinch was throwing the hook into the clinch, right? So what he would do is he would fire that left hook, and then when the opponent ducks, that's usually when he would clinch you up with either like a front headlock or like a tie plumb, even an over-under. I mean, he had the full grip, gaming ar grip game arsenal. Right, and he, he was just very good at engaging it when he needed to. One thing he was really good at was he would make you miss with the fade, and then he would clinch you up right after that. So you'd fade, miss, and then he would grab you. Uh, just just unique <laughs> unique things, you know what I mean? Unique things, but pretend that you know we're, we're actively trying to learn to fight like Muhammad Ali, like it's all technical, it's, there's nothing special about him, you know, he's just masterful at the technique. This is definitely one thing that you gotta get down, is being able to clinch from multiple scenarios. One, of course, being the fade. If you're gonna be using the fades a lot, clinching from the fade is, is, a, is a good idea. Definitely the most common grip I'd say he'd get. You know, he can use all manner of grips, but the most common one was definitely this collar tie. Right, he would get his arm on the back of your head he was, he's tall, and a lot of his, the times his opponents would be playing that duck and move kind of style. So he would be able to grab it pretty easily. Opponents usually shorter than him. And he would pull your head down, and he would kind of make you carry his weight. Let's see if he's going to do it here, right? He pulls your head down, and he kind of makes you carry his weight. And not only does that tire you out, it gives him a perfect angle to kind of whisper in your ear and, and talk shit to you. So it had a dual purpose, you know, it, not only would it tire you out, he has that good leverage, but he could also get, get in your head a little bit more. And then his right arm was usually preoccupied with making sure you couldn't hit with uh, the arm, with your left arm, or whatever arm he was not doing the collar tie with, right? The combination of these, he was, he was, he was fantastic at it, really underrated. I'd say Muhammad Ali was very underrated as a wrestler, as a grappler. He was, he was extremely underrated, and I think it was one of the big keys to his success. And, and one thing about his clinch game, right? So we talked about how he engaged the clinch, right? He was masterful at getting it. Once he's there, he's fantastic at minimizing the damage, right? So he's really good at, at making sure that you really don't hit him with anything clean, whether that's with shoulder rolls or whatever he's going to do. He, even if he takes some damage, it's, it's never too bad. He's very good at mitigating what you're about to do to him. And, and once again, this shows the thought process of Muhammad Ali, right? He, he knew the following, right? One, if your hands are down, you're dancing around, then at some point they're going to be chasing you. And when they chase you, they're going to grab you. And when they grab you, they're going to try to hit you. So he had things prepared for all of those scenarios, right? When they come in, he's going to be extremely good at minimizing any kind of damage that they were going to try to do to him. He's going to push off, he's going to get out of there, he's going to make an angle, and, and he's not going to get, he's not going to lose on this exchange too badly, if at all. And his mastery in these positions allowed really for a, a late game strategy to really bloom and blossom, and that was the rope-a-dope right he would just kind of piss you off he would chill on the ropes and piss you off to the point where you, you know you'd burn yourself out you'd punch yourself out and then that's when he'd beat you i mean the trash talking has a big part of this and not only that he has he's really technically masterful at every area that you would want him to be in if he was to defend again if he was to fight this way his key really considered all the technical skills he was going to need in order to be who he was, and he was very good at it. And it was this strategy, this very strategy, that Muhammad Ali used to famously defeat George Foreman. Right? Younger, 
more athletic crusher. Muhammad Ali's legs weren't quite underneath him the way they were before, but he had that clinch mastery and he had, he had all the other elements in place well enough to take down George Foreman. 